What do you do when you accidentally kill all of your dad's fish? We'll get into that in a bit, but first, I'm 28-year-old female, considering separating from my husband, 39-year-old male. My husband, 39, and I, 28, have been married for 4 years, together for 5, but have known each other for 12. We have 2.5-year-old twins and an 11-year-old daughter from husband's previous marriage. Growing up, I never wanted to get married or have children, but when my husband and I got together, that feeling changed. We moved pretty quickly and while I was happy with our life, I was also in a very low point in my depression. This relationship really kept me afloat. Lately, really for about a year, I've been feeling incredibly disconnected like we're simply roommates co-parenting. When this first started, I assumed this was just normal disconnection based on our young children and not really having time to spend together, financial and home stress, etc. But with efforts to connect, it feels like more than that. We really do have a lot in common when we do spend time together, go out to eat alone, etc. We have next to nothing to talk about besides our children. I just feel nothing to be honest. I love him, he's a great father despite our different parenting styles, but I don't feel in love with him. To go along with this feeling of disconnection, I'm the preferred parent. I do the majority of the housework, handle dropping off and picking up the kids, and I'm mentally exhausted all of the time. I often feel like a single parent, but I'm not. I've expressed these feelings to him in the past and somehow, the conversation always ends up with me apologizing for being dramatic, for not recognizing the things he does, etc. I never feel validated in my feelings. He always explains it away and tells me I'm wrong. I've thought about what it would look like to separate or divorce so many times and I feel terrified for my children. I do think we would be able to co-parent well, but the thought of only having my children half of the time makes me ill. The logistical pieces also make me so anxious. There's nowhere to rent here. Where would we all live? Those types of things. I don't know what I'm looking for here to be honest. I think I'm just scared. I know therapy should probably be brought up, but if it's more of just not being in love, what's the point? Now, I don't know if OP doesn't care for the topic being brought up, but they've known each other for 12 years? 12 years ago, OP was 16 years old and this guy was 27. OP has lived their entire life in this relationship. I mean, it's honestly not surprising to me that somebody who had already had, you know, a wealth of experience at 27 might be a little bit more okay with being in this circumstance than somebody who has only been locked up in this thing since they were 16. The age gap is pretty crazy. I mean, OP themselves should consider last year they would be getting with someone who was their age when the relationship began. I mean, did OP even experience life up until this point? It's just not surprising to me that they want something more or they want something different or they feel complacent. Also, hi. I'm Steven, and if you guys enjoy tricky relationship topics, why not hit those like and subscribe buttons down below? That said, our next story is, I may have ruined my relationship when I called out my boyfriend for lying about his age. I, 40-year-old male, met this guy, 44-year-old male, earlier this year, and we really hit it off. He's an incredibly handsome, intelligent, emotionally open and sweet guy originally from Turkey. I really love spending time with him. He and I can talk for hours about anything. He's so empathetic and insightful. I've not dated someone I've had this kind of ease with in a long time. In fact, I liked him so much that I started on my own to learn Turkish, just so we'd have an additional way to communicate. I have an ear for languages and ended up really taking a shine to it. After I'd picked up some basic grammar and vocabulary, I told him I was learning it and he was overjoyed. It was like the scene out of a bad rom-com. He kept pointing to things at brunch and making me say them in Turkish. He said he didn't meet any Americans who bothered to learn, and he seemed genuinely moved. I think it brought our relationship to a new level. I started to think this guy might be that elusive long-term relationship I've always wanted, but could never usually sustain past a year. Fast forward to a few weeks ago, I came across his Twitter. He'd briefly been a writer in Turkey, and I was curious to see if I could find some of his articles. He didn't tweet much and it was all in Turkish, but I noticed a photo of himself he posted from 5 years ago, because in it he had a grey beard. I'd only known his beard to be black, and I'd learned enough Turkish by then to be able to read the caption, I'm proud to be 50 years old today, meaning now he isn't 44 like I thought, he's actually 55 years old. 
Mid 50s is probably the ceiling of my age range for dating, but a 55 year old would not be out of the question. Once you're both past 30, a lot of that doesn't matter much anymore, really. He never directly said that he was 44, but that was what was on his Tinder profile. I do remember thinking he looked on the older side, but I didn't think much of it. I mentioned to a few friends what I'd found out, and a lot of them thought it was a major red flag. Not his age, but that he'd lied on his profile. They said that him dyeing his beard meant that he was intentionally trying to deceive me. At first I didn't think it was that bad and thought that maybe he was a little delicate about aging, like a midlife crisis or something. I gave him some openings to reveal his true age, but he always avoided the subject and never gave any evidence of when he was born. It was the first time I felt like I couldn't talk to him directly about something. The more I thought about it, the more I realized I was really uncomfortable about the lie. We were walking together two weeks ago, and I looked at his black beard and suddenly blurted out, You don't have to dye your beard. He looked at me confused and asked what I was talking about. I told him that I knew his beard was really gray and that he dyed it, but that he didn't have to. I don't dye my beard, he said. It was the first time I knew he lied to me, to my face. So I told him that I saw his tweet, and I knew he dyed it, and that I knew he wasn't in his 40s, he was in his 50s, but I told him it didn't matter to me. I told him that it would be better just to be honest, because what we have is special. And here's where I really messed up, I think. I thought to switch into the Turkish that we sometimes used. I meant to say, I don't care that you're older. But as I played it back in my head, what I really said was, I don't care that you're old. We walked for a bit in silence, and I asked him what he was thinking, but he didn't say much. When we got to a subway station, he said he had to go home and do some work. He kissed me and left. We haven't hung out since. We've texted a little, but his responses are short or just small talk. He's never free to get together. I worry that the relationship is over. What can I do? Is his lie a bigger red flag than I think? And should I just let this relationship end? Or if not, what should I do to fix this? Any advice you can provide is really appreciated. So personally, if I were an OP situation, I don't think I would be able to get past this. I think it is such a big lie. It's not even like, oh, I'm 49. They're lying about being, what, 11 years younger than they really are? Even if the age difference isn't a deal breaker, I think it's a huge lie, especially going to the lengths of dyeing their beard just to, what, try to hide it a little bit more? It would leave me wondering what else could be a lie, especially when you gave him outs and even addressed it and they just kind of disappeared on you and didn't own up to anything. Our next story is me, 40 year old male with my wife, 38 year old female, been together 15 years. She's been lying to her workmates for 10 years that I'm abusive and now the truth has come out, doesn't see the big deal and is mad at me. Me and my wife have been together for 15 years. She's never really been one for nights out and partying and especially not with workmates. Ten years ago, she started working at her current place and in all that time has only ever been on official staff nights out, like Christmas dues or leaving parties and every time she'll get me to drop her off and pick her up. I've asked her about this a few times and she's always said that she just doesn't like to mix her work life and social life, which I accepted as it seems very much her style. Her workplace is very female dominated, and one event they had was a family day so everyone could get to know each other. She tried her hardest to discourage me going but I insisted as at the time she'd been there 8 years and I'd never even met any of them. We went and everyone was really cold towards me, which I felt was odd but when I mentioned it to my wife afterwards, she said they were just jealous she'd had a recent promotion to manager and that's why they were hostile towards me. Fast forward to about a month ago and there was another work stew with a partners invited and again she discouraged me, reminding me what happened last time. But I said I didn't care, I'm still up for going in to support her. She begrudgingly accepted but said we were only staying for an hour. When we got there, straight away I clocked this woman called Sarah I hadn't seen for nigh on 20 years. She's a friend of my ex's. Full disclosure here, I've always had a girlfriend or wife sharing fetish, and Sarah being best friends with my ex knows about this, as my ex would go on nights out with her and cheat on me in front of Sarah. Sarah was very supportive and was happy for us. Back to the party, I spoke to her for a bit and then she went back to the main group. 
Half an hour later, me and my wife left. The next day I get a message from Sarah on Facebook that said, I wasn't sure whether to tell you this, but you've always seemed like a good bloke and I thought you needed to know. After we spoke last night, I went back to my table and the others there asked me why I was talking to you and how you're an abusive husband. I asked what they meant and they said you're jealous and controlling. Unless you've changed completely, I know this isn't true. They said Jody has never been on a night out with work because you won't let her. She's told them you don't even let her go to the shops alone, and you monitor all her electronics and socials. She's even told them they aren't allowed to message her outside work hours because you'll have her phone, so it's a breach of data protection. I'm hoping this isn't true. I'm almost certain it isn't. Feel free to tell Jody I told you all this. I'm only here till Christmas anyway. I was beyond stunned and rang Sarah to ask her to talk me through everything that was said again. It was horrific. She made me out to be some master manipulator who keeps her under lock and key when the reality is I don't even know her phone passcode to go through her phone, let alone hold it hostage as soon as she gets in. I waited until Jody got home and told her everything. She went pale and then got very angry, saying her reputation at work is ruined now and why couldn't I just go along with it? I've made her look bad. She did that to herself. They're going to think she's a liar, she is, and what do I care what a group of women think about me unless I fancy them or they fancy me. The last bit isn't helped by the fact just a couple days before this incident, a friend of hers defending me on Instagram when my wife posted a meme about useless husbands and they need to realize what a catch they have. This was now two big arguments in the space of a few days where she'd been bad mouthing me to others and was feeling attacked by other women defending me. It's been nearly a month now and we still aren't talking properly. She still refuses to think she's done anything wrong and says they're just little white lies I've blown out of proportion. I refuse to forgive her and move on until she acknowledges what she's done and she agrees to go to individual therapy to work out why she felt the need to lie and have couples therapy so we can both learn how to move on. I'll be honest, I'm leaning towards leaving her, but want some advice on whether I'm overreacting and if this is salvageable. What do you think is the best? I don't think OP's overreacting in the least bit. I don't know what she's going on about, but this whole, like, fabrication is crazy. She's like living a whole double life as far as her whole worker environment is concerned. I mean, it's to the point where somebody might, like, report OP and, like, get actual cops called or a welfare check or something. This whole thing is just so out there. I don't know how you could just, like, keep going on with this as is if you were in OP's shoes. If this is not, like, auto-relationship ending, I don't know what is. Either that or a lot of couples therapy. Our next story is, I, 45-year-old female, feel heartbroken after my partner, 48-year-old male, admitted he didn't find me attractive when we met. We've been together for five years. He's an artist and he has on several occasions, in passing, mentioned how beautiful someone is. He's never said this about me. However, we had a big argument several months ago. I was mad about something he'd said and the takeaway from that fight was that he doesn't think to tell me I'm beautiful because, no. He's never found me physically beautiful, but that he loves me and that's what makes me beautiful to him. Last night we were chatting and we were talking about a couple of people that he knew from college days who were now pretty successful in an industry. I asked if these were the ones that he had a particular sexual encounter with and he was a bit taken aback. He hadn't remembered telling me that. He later said he now remembered telling me and that he'd done so because he had no interest in me at the time and didn't think we'd ever be dating. When I asked him why not, I was very interested in him. He said I just wasn't his type at all. That surprised me and I asked him if he hadn't found me pretty. He said he's sure some people found me pretty but that he didn't. That he only started hanging out with me because he was lonely at the time and I was always willing to go out. He also quickly assured me that he eventually fell in love with me and that he's still in love with me. Am I being ridiculous? I feel just heartbroken or something. I cried this morning in the shower. Just this awful feeling that I was never pretty to him. I still don't think I'm pretty to him at all, which shouldn't really matter, except he notices beauty and has mentioned it in other women. I just feel shattered and I don't even know how to feel. I almost want to break up. We aren't married. I feel ugly and humiliated or something. Can anyone talk me down off the ledge? 
I mean, to be honest, if I were an OP situation and I found this out, I would be utterly heartbroken too. I think it's a very realistic thing to be in a relationship where you want to feel desired physically. I honestly feel like even if this guy was in a relationship with someone he felt he wasn't conventionally attracted to, if he truly loved somebody and wanted to be with them, they would have no problem complimenting you regularly. I guess at the end of the day, you can't fault him for not being honest. I think it comes down to taking stock of your relationship. Are you truly happy? What do you want out of this relationship? And would you rather take the chance on trying to find a relationship with somebody else who would say that you are beautiful? Our next story is, my 30 year old female, husband 43 year old male, got me a Homer Simpson sweatshirt from Primark for my 30th birthday. I turned 30 last Friday. All my family and friends are in a different country as I moved here permanently after marrying my husband. So special days always feel a bit lonely to me. I also just had my first child at the end of July, so life has been chaos. I've been with my husband for 4 years, married for nearly 2. I've never been the type to make a big fuss about birthdays or holidays, but I suppose I felt like my 30th birthday was sort of a big one. Money is tight so I was never expecting some grandiose gift. But he literally only got me a Homer Simpson sweatshirt from Primark. It wasn't even wrapped or in a bag, he just sort of handed it to me. There's no significance to the shirt either, no inside joke or anything like that. We didn't do anything, there was no cake or anything special at all. I guess it just really hurt my feelings. His mom and stepdad's birthdays were both earlier the same month and we did more, financially and otherwise, for both of them than was done for me, and it's not like I did the whole say I don't want anything while secretly hoping for something thing. I feel like, especially with my daughter having just arrived, a thoughtful gift would have been really simple this year. A printed out and framed photo of her and I or something like that. It just felt so thoughtless. It even would have been nice if he just suggested we go out for a picnic. I let him know it really hurt my feelings and that the whole thing felt like an afterthought. He seemed to feel bad about it and I told him he could have a redo. It's been over a week now though and nothing has happened. I don't think it will. My feelings are still really hurt and I feel resentful. How do I move past this? I feel like I've communicated my feelings about the situation several times. At this point, I don't want to keep hounding him about it because, frankly, the moment is kind of past now. I think the most troubling thing here is, sure, okay, maybe they could be forgetful or maybe they could have been insensitive enough to just not really try. Okay, but OP let them know it really hurt their feelings and asked for a redo and they haven't even done anything. That's the biggest concern to me. What do you do when you told them, hey, listen, it really hurt, please, let's just do something special and they just kind of ghost you again. I think at this point you look to do something for yourself to make sure that you celebrate you and your birthday some way somehow and once again reiterate how disappointed you are that they did nothing for you. Our next story is, how do I break up with my asexual girlfriend? Me, 20 year old male and my girlfriend, 19 year old female, have been together for over 2 years. We fell in love in high school and thought we were a perfect match. I still think so. However, a few months in, we realized she's asexual. Despite trying therapy, nothing changed, and our relationship turned two years old and it became a long-distanced one. I was miserable for a very long time due to my sex drive, but I've been patient because I love her with all my heart. Recently, she told me she stopped her therapy because she doesn't see the point, which crushed me. It feels like she's not as caring and engaged anymore. My friends have been saying I should end it and I'm pretty sure they're right, but I'm struggling with how to do it. Any advice? I also need help justifying it because I just can't look at the person I'm in love with in the eye and break up with them. Emotionally, I'm still all in and it would feel like throwing a treasure away. Has anyone else been in a similar situation? I can't say that I've been in a similar situation but I do think there's a rather important need in OP's life that's just completely unfulfilled in this relationship. It's in no way her fault, but it's understandable why OP would be frustrated. The bottom line here is it comes down to OP figuring out, is not having that kind of intimacy in your relationship a deal breaker throughout the rest of that relationship? If it is a deal breaker, the best policy is just being completely honest. 
that you do love and you care about them, but that you're human with your own needs and they're just not going to be fulfilled in this relationship and that you just have to move on. Not too often does a relationship break up with smiles or going happily their separate ways. I think no matter what, it's probably going to hurt. Just being truthful and honest is the best way. It's just not realistic when you have needs that cannot be fulfilled. Our next story is 28-year-old female, my boyfriend, 32-year-old male, missed my PhD defense, and now we're not talking. What should I do? Hello everyone, a little background. I'm 28-year-old female and recently defended my PhD. As many of you might know, this is a significant milestone for any student. My entire family flew in from my home country to celebrate with me, and I invited almost every friend I know. The only significant absence was my boyfriend of two years, who lives in the same country as I do. He said he had to work and couldn't attend. It's worth noting we've never introduced each other to our families. Throughout the celebration, I felt a deep sting every time someone asked about his absence, and it hurt even more when my family insinuated that he might not want to meet them by not showing up. I was distant with him after the party, and when we talked, I expressed how hurt I felt. He acknowledged my feelings but revealed he simply didn't ask for the day off work. I was hurt, expecting an apology that never came. In frustration, I suggested we take a break, to which he responded, however you wish. A week later, with no communication between us, I received a bouquet with a note, congratulations, I know you're mad at me, I love you. I thanked him, hoping it was a step towards reconciliation. However, he stated the flowers were just late and accused me of not caring of his feelings and ignoring him for one week. He said he didn't want to discuss further and was going to bed. Since then, now almost two weeks, we haven't spoken. He's the type who says he'd never initiate contact, especially if he believes he's in the right. While I generally won't reach out first if I believe I'm not at fault, the silence is taking a toll on me. My question is, should I wait for him to contact me? Or should I make the first move? Each day that goes by makes me sadder and more confused. Honestly, I feel like he's being crappy intentionally to try to guilt trip you and make you apologize. Honestly, is it worth being in a relationship with somebody who's willing to just shut down and act the way he is? Our next story is, I accidentally killed all of my dad's koi fish. I've been taking care of my dad's koi for about three years now but I've been seeing both my dad and mom take care of the koi pond in the backyard pretty much all my life. Three of the fish are literally older than me and I'm in the middle of my 20s. He's taken care of these longer than I've been alive. Right now, my parents live away from me and I look over the original house with the koi pond. Over the years, I would chat with my dad back and forth on how to change out the filters, feed the fish, more filters, etc. For context, my dad is the silent type and we don't really talk much, but when we do, it's about the koi. After he came home from work, he would go outside to look and feed his koi for hours. He built his seven foot deep koi pond from where our original garden backyard was with his own hands, including all the piping to the secondary pond. A little while after my wife and I came back from vacation, the koi pond water level obviously dropped quite a bit. I had my sister check on it while I was gone, so I manually used the hose to refill the water level. I normally use the automatic water hose system, however the day before my wife turned it off because I left another part of the hose on when I was bathing my dog. For some reason, my head decided to use the manual, and I often do use it, but forgot to set the timer. Needless to say, the water was left on all night, and I woke up to go to work, but I forgot and did not hear the water running still. I come back later that night and realize to my horror, I'd left it on probably for a full 24 hours. The fish all died. All 10 big koi fish, the two small koi, and the mosquito fishes. This is not about the money, but just to let you know, these fish are very expensive. It was worse than my worst nightmare about this. I would constantly worry before that this would happen because I don't have very good attention to detail. My mom would tell me that my dad would be constantly worried that I would not be able to keep his fish alive, but my mom promised him that I was responsible enough. In the end, he was proven right. I freaked up harder than I've ever done in my life. I tried to prove him wrong. I called my parents and told them what happened. My mom asked a few questions. I answered. 
I said I was sorry. My dad is, of course, silent. I don't think anyone knew what to say. Even though the fish were not mine, they still felt close to me these past few years. So I grieve for them, and it feels so much worse knowing that I was the one to end their life. I don't even know if my dad will ever talk or look at me again. I don't know what to do. I don't think there is anything I can do. I mean, the bottom line here that you have to reason and level with yourself is that it was a mistake. Was it maybe careless? Could you have done better? Sure, but at the end of the day, it was a mistake. Anybody could have made that mistake. Secondly, and I don't mean to demean his connection with those fish, but my question is, after three years of not even being around them or taking care of them, I don't know if it feels to me really that he was all that connected to those fish. Did OP's mom force their dad to give up those fish and leave? Either way, OP did the right thing. They were forthcoming. They were honest. You'll grieve, but hopefully he'll come to accept that it was a mistake and forgive. Our next story is, my 29-year-old female, boyfriend, 39-year-old male, wants people to think he's single and I don't understand why. I, 29-year-old female, have been with my boyfriend, 39-year-old male, for over a year, and I'm currently living at his place. We've gone on trips, I've met his friends and gone with him to social events, etc., but he is never affectionate in public, and people say we look like we could just be friends. He's also never mentioned me or that he's in a relationship on social media, which is sus since he uses it regularly for personal as well as work, and he doesn't like it if I put him on social media either. When I asked him about these things, he said he doesn't like PDA. He doesn't want the relationship on social media because we'll get trolled for our age gap and he wants to keep it private. I think those are fair reasons, but I don't think they are honest. He showed his last relationship on socials without giving any info about his ex. He mentioned her name instead of tagging her and used pics where you can't see her face. So I don't see why he can't do that with me. I also think that there's a difference between not liking PDA and not touching your partner so that people think you're casual or just friends. I think he's trying to give the impression that he's single on social media or at least not in a serious relationship in public. I don't think he's cheating or I'm the side chick because we're together every night unless he's away or I am and if there was someone else there would have been signs by now. Can anyone explain what this is? Am I just overreacting or being insecure here? To be fair, I have heard of plenty of people who are overly aware about their social media presence who would want to keep their relationships private but that's usually a case of like somebody really big who either they don't want their partner getting wrapped up and fans going after them or honestly they kind of try to profit off of a parasocial thing which appearing single sells better. In this situation, I don't know if I really get it, the fact that he says people are going to tear him apart for the age gap. That kind of suggests to me that they do have maybe an audience of some kind, which to be fair, I don't think a 29 year old and a 39 year old there's anything necessarily wrong as long as they're both compatible maturity wise. But I would imagine some people on like Twitter for example could totally tear somebody apart for really no reason just for having that age gap. I guess I feel like I need to know more about his social media presence to really try to understand. I mean some people do have a thing about PDA. Personally, that would be a pretty big negative to me if we can't have any sign of affection in public. Unless this guy has like an actual audience, I don't know why he's hiding you. Our next story is, my 30, husband, 34, changed my name on his phone. Hi, I just want to know if I should be worried. I recently saw my name on his phone and it's actually my first name now instead of wifey. My name has been wifey on his phone since the day we got married. It's been two years now. Is there any possible reason why he would change it? I asked him about it and he changed topic and didn't answer. My husband's working from home and would only go out the house once in a while when he would run some errands. Nothing changed from before and now, except I'm busy at work. I mean, him changing the topic definitely feels a bit suspicious. I would try to ask about it a little bit more, especially bring up the fact that they seemed to evade the topic altogether. I would express that you're not mad about it, you just want to understand what the name change was about. Are they feeling bad or feeling negative about things? Is there anything you need to talk about? Now if he's evasive or tries to shut that down, I'd definitely keep kind of looking around a little bit. Probably be a little bit more hyper aware whether or not it's justified. But with that being said, 
that's all the time we have for today. Now, if you want to hear another crazy relationship topic, check out that video on the left. Or if you missed my latest video, check out that video on the right. That said, I'll see you all next time with some more stories.